Hi, my name is Dean Passion, and I am the Director of Advanced Programs at First RF Corporation. After development of an active phased array for the Navy on another CBR project that used the legacy spectrum for KU band CDL communications, the Navy has asked our company to find a way to put together a modification that would allow the use of the new enhanced spectrum. We developed an approach to extend the operating bandwidth of the previous phased array to include this new enhanced spectrum. First RF is an 18 year old small business that develops antennas and RF systems. In our first year of operation, we set the single year record for the number of phase one silver wins. We're most well known for the development and production of the antennas that helped save our service members' lives in Afghanistan and Iraq by jamming the remote operation of improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, as they're generally known. The invention behind that 300 to 1 bandwidth antenna received the Army's Top 10 Inventions of the Year Award. And these crew antennas went from a Phase 1 Sibber directly to production. First RF has produced over a quarter million antennas in our facilities in Boulder, Colorado. Airborne platforms offer many benefits in providing communication relays, and the approach allows the Navy to use aircraft for relays in beyond line of sight data links without using satellites. If omnidirectional antennas, which do not need any pointing information, are used in these relays, the data rates are restricted to fairly low levels. So in order to move to higher data rates, directional antennas are needed. Parabolic reflector antennas can be used, but each reflector antenna only forms one beam. So you would need many parabolic reflector antennas on a single platform to form multiple beams. Phased array antennas, however, can be designed and built to, perform, to form multiple beams on each aperture. So the phased array antennas are pretty much the way to go um, in supporting these kinds of data links. And as there's a need for higher data rates or more simultaneous data links, we need to add more spectrum. And the additional spectrum can support making or breaking links in an ad hoc networking environment and higher data rates. Phased array antennas are the key to meeting the need for these directional antennas with the ability to form multiple beams and to quickly repoint the beam as you change links or you change pointing directions in both the dynamic environment of these UAVs or even manned platforms and also this ad hoc networking scheme. Uh, the added spectrum helps both with higher data rates, but also improved flexibility in setting channels and forming the multiple links for the multiple beams. Um, the Navy needs these multiple beam phased arrays to support uh, the use of this enhanced spectrum for both CDL and TCDL, tactical CDL data links. Legacy links that used CDL historically have had one portion of the spectrum for the ground to air link and a separate portion spaced away from a little gap band or guard band, I guess you could call it, um, to another part of the spectrum for the air to ground link. However, to support air-to-air -air relay operations, one of the airborne platforms needs to change to look like a ground platform. Otherwise, the mismatch in the spectrum use doesn't work. So to support these air-to-air -air operations, the Navy needs the antennas that are on these platforms to both simultaneously receive and transmit in any part of the legacy spectrum and also the extended KU band spectrum. And the Navy wants to connect as many as 12 assets simultaneously 
in these links, aircraft, ships, ground vehicles, etc. In uh, a spectrum challenged environment, that's another benefit of the enhanced spectrum is you can move around to get away from interference and jamming and related activities. First RF is using a novel phased array antenna construction approach. The building block is called a simple manufacturable array technology or smart card. And this smart card contains multiple antenna radiators or elements along with the amplifiers, phase shifters, and control electronics that form an active electronically scanned array or AESA antenna. A chassis or enclosure is built to accommodate multiple smart cards. Each smart card gets an address from the chassis location to allow distributed computation of the settings of each card during operation, like phase shifter settings. The master controller only sends pointing commands for the array, and each card then performs in parallel its own computations. Smart cards are interchangeable, and any card can be placed in any slot in the enclosure. The modularity is not only within a single chassis, as multiple enclosures will be used for full 360 degree coverage, and in larger arrays, multiple enclosures might be used for each face. There's a good history in this smart card approach to building modular phased arrays at first RF, and they can be easily scaled to any size and any frequency band. Many different AESAs at first RF use this construction method, and antenna arrays using smart cards for their fabrication have thousands of hours of flight operations. I am sure that many of you are familiar with the typical SIBR program progression. We developed this extended bandwidth phased array antenna concept in phase one, and we are working to build and test prototype hardware during our current phase two effort. Based on strong interest with our sponsor, PMA 262, the progression beyond the basic phase two effort appears likely. PMA 262 has a real strong focus in the support of robust manned unmanned teaming, or MUM-T, and multi-ship communication at high data rates in a spectrum-challenged environment. We have already talked about the extended bandwidth in this phased array design and the use of the modularity of the smart card construction. We have not, however, spent much time on the many benefits of AESA hardware for these types of communication relays. A high gain antenna with a directional beam is the key to both high data rates and to switching quickly between nodes and compensating for uh, platform motion. A lower gain omnidirectional antennas that have historically been used in these types of early CDL relays didn't need to point. But this antenna provides fast beam steering to quickly switch to a new node in the network or to compensate for motion on a dynamic unmanned platform or even manned platforms. Examples are MQ4, MQ25, MQ8, E2D, the Bacon Pod, um, various U.S. Air Force bombers and tankers, and also SOCOM Army and UAVs. These types of airborne platforms need reduced size, weight, and power, as well as cost. And the solution that we've developed at First RF offers this very low swap C. All UAV platforms and even manned aircraft are targeted as possible hosts for this enhanced spectrum phased array antenna solution. As mentioned earlier, these target platforms include the MQ-4, the MQ-25, the MQ-8, the E-2D, the Bacon Pod, U.S. Air Force bombers and tankers, and SOCOM Army UAVs. This part of the transition path is planned. 
However, this is actually a great, a great place to ask for other transition opportunities. If you see a benefit to this type of phased array antenna system that supports high data rates, is modular, it's scalable, has fast beam steering to meet needs of a dynamic platform or even for the quick, quick switching between different nodes in a network, please let us know. While the size of an antenna is based more on physics than on the actual technology, smaller antenna systems are desired. To keep the performance up under any reduction in size, we use more efficient power amplifiers, lower noise figure receive amplifiers, and in general, lower loss components. While this application is for communications and data relay links, on both manned and unmanned airborne platforms, the market for these types of AES antenna systems include radar, electromagnetic, transmit and receive needs, both SIGINT and Airborne Electronic Attack, AEA. These types of arrays can be used over a wide range of frequency bands. While First RF is mostly focused on arrays from roughly S band up through the millimeter wave bands, we have built phased arrays down through UHF and antennas all the way down to VLF, like all the way down to three kilohertz. As the interfaces to these AESA antennas become more standard, the modularity of the construction and the open interface to to connect to these arrays will also become more common. The legacy approach of starting each phased array antenna design from scratch is gonna to move to leveraging existing designs like you see here to keep the modularity and the open interface. Commercial communication systems have a need for directional antenna, and this need is driven both by higher data rates, and spectrum reuse. On the DoD side, there's a similar need for higher data rates, but security is the driver for the direction of beams, even though interference mitigation is another benefit. All uses will need quick beam steering for mobile platforms and for ad hoc networking. I want to thank you for listening to this presentation. And I am happy to be able to talk about this innovative AESA antenna system to support communication relays at even higher data rates by leveraging the additional spectrum of the extended KU band CDL allocation. First RF is a small business with a tremendous ability to meet the toughest antenna challenges. Tim Enoch or I will be happy to talk with you further about any opportunities to use these enhanced phased array solutions to scale an active phased array antenna to meet your needs.